Hey everybody, this is Robert and welcome to today's show. And today I want to take a look at the incredibly fluid situation with the novel coronavirus situation in Wuhan, China that has caused uh, a number of pneumonia cases. And this is incredibly fluid and, and this is current as of January 12th. This is changing on a daily basis, so nothing I'm going to say today will be the same tomorrow. So just um, keep that in mind, but this is current as of January 12th. And the World Health Organization um, sent out a report today, and it says, um, the World Health Organization is reassured of the quality of the ongoing investigations and the response measures implemented in Wuhan and the commitment to share information regularly. And if you go on Twitter, there are a lot of scientists out there that are really um, giving a hat tip to uh, the Chinese officials for their quickness of response, uh, uh, creating a test pretty quickly, um, and just the sharing of the information um, on a pretty, pretty quick basis. Uh, the evidence is highly suggestive that the outbreak is associated with exposures in one seafood market in Wuhan. Now, that market was closed on January 1st. Uh, at this stage, there's no infection among healthcare workers and no clear evidence of human to human transmission. Uh, among the 41 confirmed cases, there's been one fatality. And this particular fatality was a 61-year-old man who had some serious underlying medical conditions. Now, China shared the genetic sequence of the novel coronavirus today, which will be of great importance for other countries in developing specific diagnostic kits. The cluster was initially reported on December 31st. Uh, Chinese authorities identified a new type of coronavirus, a novel coronavirus, which was isolated on January 7. Laboratory testing was conducted on all suspected cases identified through active case finding and retrospective review. A bunch of uh, various respiratory pathogens were ruled out, including MERS and SARS and uh, avian influenza and seasonal influenza and others. Now, according to the information that the World Health Organization has gotten from the Chinese authorities, the 41 cases with novel coronavirus have been preliminary diagnosed in Wuhan. Seven were severely ill. Uh, and of course, one of these are the, are the fatality. Six patients have been discharged from the hospital. Um, symptom onset of the 41 confirmed cases ranges from December 8, 2019 through January 2nd of this year. And no additional cases have been detected since January 3rd. Um, clinical signs and symptoms reported are mainly fever with a few cases having difficulty in breathing and chase, oh, excuse me, chest radiographs showing invasive pneumonic infiltrates in both lungs. And national authorities report that patients have been isolated and are receiving treatment in Wuhan medical institutions. So that's what uh, we got from the World Health Organization. And essentially, they got much of that right from the Wuhan Municipal Health and Health Commission, who says much of the same thing in this, in this news release from Saturday. And this is... Um, the English translated version from the Chinese. And it basically does say the same thing. Uh, the World Health Organization also released um, some guidance concerning case definitions for uh, human infection with the novel coronavirus. And the primary objectives of the surveillance are to detect confirmed cases and clusters of novel coronavirus infection and any evidence of amplified or sustained human to human transmission and to determine the risk factors and the geographic risk area for the infection with the virus. Uh, so the case definition, these are the following people that should be investigated. Um, severe acute respiratory infection in a person with history of fever and cough requiring admission to the hospital with no other etiology that fully explains the clinical presentation. And any of the following, a history of travel to Wuhan, Hubei province in China, 
in a 14 days prior to symptom onset, or the disease occurs in a healthcare worker who has been working in an environment where patients with severe acute respiratory infections are being cared for without regard to place of residence or history of travel, or the person develops an unusual or unexpected clinical course, especially sudden deterioration despite appropriate treatment, without regard to place of residence or history of travel, even if another etiology has been identified that fully explains the clinical presentation. So those are some of the things that are summarized in the case definition when physicians are looking at patients. Um, in addition, they say a person with acute respiratory illness of any degree of severity who within 14 days before onset of illness, had any of the following exposures. That could be a close physical contact with a confirmed case of novel coronavirus, a healthcare facility in a country where hospital-associated novel coronavirus infections have been reported, or direct contact with animals in countries where no novel coronavirus is known to be circulating in animal populations or where human infections have occurred as a result of presumed zoonotic transmission. All right, let's go. Let's move on to some of the information concerning testing. And this was a tweet that came out from the World Health Organization very recently. And it says, "Whole genome sequences for the novel coronavirus, 2019 novel coronavirus, from the Chinese authorities were shared with the World Health Organization and have also been submitted by Chinese authorities to the GS." GIS AID platform so that they can be accessed by public health authorities, laboratories, and researchers. And if we go down here, it talks about a new quick test that will be available in a few days. Kong Fan Yai, Assistant Dean of the University of Hong Kong School of Medicine and Director of the Department of Infectious Diseases of the Department of Internal Medicine said that all the genes of the virus have been obtained. It is expected that a new rapid PCR test can be designed within a few days to a week to test whether the patient sample is correct for Wuhan. The new virus is posit positive and he expects the new test to take three to four hours to produce results. And continuing with the testing and the genetic uh, findings, um, there's been a lot of incredible scientists on Twitter posting information concerning uh, the genetic findings and um, testing. And SIDRAP did a very good job of kind of putting all this together in a few paragraphs of some of the, the key tweets that are out there. And it says uh, Chinese scientists submitted the gen gene sequencing data for posting on Virological.org, a hub for pre-publication data designed to assist the public health activities and research. And so we have a bunch of these uh, posts here. Uh, one is from Vinet Menachery, PhD, with uh, UTMB, and who said that the novel coronavirus appears to be a group 2B coronavirus, which puts it in the same family as SARS, the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome virus. Now, Andrew Rambot, PhD, the administrator of virological.org and professor of molecular evolution at the University of Edinburgh, said on Twitter that novel coronavirus is 89% similar to SARS-related bat coronavirus in the Sarbecovirus group of beta coronaviruses. Quote, but that doesn't mean that it comes from bats. MERS coronavirus is 88% identical to the nearest known bat virus, and MERS is endemic in camels, close quote. So they go over some very interesting information uh, concerning genetic uh, testing and analysis. And then this one tweet from a gentleman named Kevin Oliveau. He is a disease ecologist and... Uh, conservationist. I believe he's up in New York City. And uh, he tweeted out the um, uh, tree for the Wuhan uh, China human coronavirus. And it says, rapid 
phylogenetic analysis of novel Wuhan, China, human coronavirus shows it definitely clusters with the SARS-related coronavirus clade. Note, prelim analysis based on 410 BP of RDRP. More analyses forthcoming, but great to see the sequencing data being shared by China. And let me see if I can expand this a little bit. And you can take a look at it for yourself. It may not mean much to you, but uh, that's where it is. So very interesting stuff um, coming out of the Twitter page of Kevin Oliville. Um, and then we have uh, some news out of Hong Kong that the Undersecretary for Food and Health, Dr. Chui Takiyi, will be visiting Wuhan tomorrow to examine the situation concerning the cluster of pneumonia cases. Uh, this is according to the Food and Health Bureau of Hong Kong. The Bureau said that the arrangement of the National Health Commission, um, with the arrangement of the National Health Commission, Dr. Chua will go to Wuhan together with representatives from the Department of Health and Hospital Authority to learn about the prevention and control measures and clinical management there. And they're expected to return on Tuesday. And the last article I, I found very interesting concerning this is from a friend of the show, uh, Dr. Judy Stone, uh, who writing for Forbes. And what she does is um, she does spell out a little bit about the coronaviruses. And then she asks some pretty interesting questions at the end of her article. And we'll start here. This would be the third new coronavirus causing outbreaks in the past 20 years. It's impressive seeing the scientific progress made since SARS the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, in 2003. SARS, the first widespread and deadly coronavirus, spread globally, infecting almost 8,100 and killing 774 in 37 countries before it was brought under control. Cases began in November 2003 and exploded over the first three months. It took until July to stop the outbreak. Scientists discovered the link to Civets in live animal markets in China. Subsequently, fruit bats were found to be the likely reservoir for the virus. At that time, China was initially reluctant to openly discuss the scope of the SARS problem. Other countries, as India and Peru, had experienced severe financial losses after epidemics were reported in their countries. Gro Harlem Brundtland, then director of the World Health Organization, helped gain the Chinese government's cooperation. Greater transparency and sharing specimens and the information was essential to stopping the epidemic, as were rigorous infection control precautions. And then she goes on to say that the next novel coronavirus, of course, was MERS, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus, which emerged in 2012. A major problem in identifying and stopping that epidemic was the Saudi government was less than forthcoming about the cases. In fact, there were solid reports that Saudi government even directed physicians to misreport the cause of death of patients. Uh, MERS was found to be primarily spread person to person, although a small percentage of patients had direct contact with camels, likely the major reservoir. Bats were also found to be the host for the virus. In that outbreak, 851 people have died. And then she goes down here and she and, and asks some pretty important questions I thought were really good. It says, what happens next? Epidemiological work will need to continue monitoring close contacts of cases to look for new secondary cases. We still don't know the source of the disease or how it is transmitted, though a mammal at the live meat market seems the most likely route. Marianne Koopmans, uh, an expert on zoonoses at Erasmus in Netherlands, asked a key question. What happens at the market that leads to infection of so many people at the same time? And is that source contained with the closing and cleaning of the market? Will the virus be found at other similar markets? What was different at this one in Wuhan? The reservoir infection needs to be identified. It is suspected to be bats because of the similarities in the virus to SARS and MERS, though there are significant differences. Antibody tests will need to be developed to screen for cases of infection that were asymptomatic. The disease will need to be replicated in lab animals to better study how it is transmitted and how it causes illness. While there is not yet any person-to-person -person spread demonstrated, surveillance will 
be tested when up to 400 million Chinese travel during the upcoming Lunar New Year. Another thing that is different with this outbreak is that there has been much greater vigilance. Hong Kong, Singapore, and South Korea preemptively screened and isolated travelers from Wuhan and have found no spread. Symptomatic patients were found to have other viral infections. And uh, then she talks about, um, it turns out that the pandemic preparedness exercise at Johns Hopkins University last month was quite timely. It used a fictional novel coronavirus as a case study modeled after MERS and SARS. Um, Emily Ricotta, PhD, also live tweeted in with her thread that can be seen here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, link to Judy's, Dr. Stone's uh, article down below if you want to take a look at it. It's very good. Uh, that is a more efficient way of seeing what happened as well as being perhaps less de depressing. Um Let's see. And she's got a lot of great links in here. So I encourage you to check those out uh, when you check out her article at Forbes. This new Wuhan virus outbreak in China, which appears to be due to a novel coronavirus, is another warning to us about the need for more research in infectious diseases, epidemiology, and control measures. Close contact with live animals is a common thread, as is habitat destruction, for example, like with Ebola. We are lucky so far, but there is much we still don't know about this new virus. And so true. Very, very true. Anyway, that's kind of, in a nutshell, what we know as of January 12th. I want to uh, make one particular um, observation. If there's a Twitter page called Flu Trackers. And they do a yeoman's job of keeping track of all the different events that are going on with an outbreak like this. So I encourage you to check them out. That, again, that's Flu Trackers on Twitter. And I, I'll go ahead and link to them down below too if you want to check them out. Really good stuff. And they're really good when it comes to stuff like this. Anyway, that's what I got for you today. Um, go ahead and uh, comment below. Uh, share this with your friends. Like the page. Subscribe to the page. And I'll see you next time on Outbreak News TV.